This is a Yamaha Natural Sound AS500. It doesn't work. I got given it as an on working up. It's been a shelf queen for a bit. So, let's make it work. Um, dodgy camera angle because, you know, this thing's it's a chunk of an amp and it's not really many places I can put the camera where I've even got the remotest chance of actually working on the thing the seeing is I'm trying to work on a little table because I don't have the workbench set up yet don't exactly have the space to um, be moving things around So, <clears throat> the thing died, like died, died, um, it was, it was used as a party amp, um, I seem to recall it might have actually, you know when you get told a few stories about bits of gear, so because I do what I do, I hear various stories about either bits of gear that people have broke or and people I know are currently working on and you sometimes hear stories about stuff and then you're wondering was that the same amp or was that a different one? I forget. But I seem to think this had actually been used as a party amp and had been stored in a shed in between being used and they got it out of the shed and it decided to turn that the way. And why are you coming on? Uh, oh yeah. Let's um mm. let's get you in for a closer look, shall we? I mean it's a chunk inside, isn't it? What have we got there? Uh, can I shed a bit more light on this? No matter how much light you have, it's never enough for trying to film anything. Um so what have we got? We've got some ancillary power supply stuff. That must be for standby display and stuff. Looks like a voltage regulator board down there. This looks like a main rectifier board. And I'm going to guess that's some regulators on there. A couple of relays. I guess those are output relays. These are educated guesses, not just me randomly guessing. Got a main power transformer, she's a nice sized one. I guess, sort of, that's got to be pushing 150, sort of VA mark. Two heat sinks, one there and one here. These are going to be for the amplifier itself. So that down there, yeah, look, that's going to be all your input signal. So let me. And the, um, down here is going to be for your input. You're going to have your drivers and your outputs going to be here. Oh, this here is all the signal processing side of stuff. Because look, so that's going to be all your. Um, does she have digital input in it? She does not. She has a subwoofer output. Um, power management. That must have a standby thing or something. So this is all your signal switching and bits and bobs. Uh, so I've got a phono stage on here as well. Uh, interestingly, yeah, that's a second board. So far you've got two different power supply boards. The amp board, signal processing and... Oh, I guess I've just got a ton more stuff. It is packed, really. So... Yeah, that's power switch. That's for your speaker selection and stuff. That's your various controls, treble balance. Um, that's your line selectors and volume control. Well, but that's just on the back of the volume control part, <laughs> really. So, yes, yeah, that's the. Uh, So, 
Let's start at the um, outputs, I guess. That's your usual. Something's been getting cranked. The usual place to look is going to be the output transistors. So, see if I can get to them and see what that brings. So, oh, I think you can see something there. Uh, does this brace come off the way? Let's get this out of the way, shall we? Little, um, little supporting bracket in the way here. That's better. Well, what have we got? That's some kind of um, thermal compensation board. Apologies for the audio quality, you're all the way up there and I'm down here and I'm just using the camera mic. Um, so starting my basic of tests, the good old millimeter. Oh dear me, is that all it is? It's a set of 2SC611 and 2SA2151. Single pair of output transistors per channel. Interestingly on the board it has provisions for additional transistors, so it even has, are these possibly the emitter resistors for all of these, even for the transistors that aren't on the board? I wonder, I wonder if that's the case, some resistors here, here, and yeah, anyway, if it's output transistors, um, I should put extra pairs in won't really make it any more powerful, but it will make it more robust, so... Oh, look at that. Can you hear the beeping? Collector to drain, and... Oh, if I can get into this one. No, it's not shorted. Just, yeah, it looks like... That base... And I'll collect to drain. Collected to admit it. Really? Ah, these stupid little boards here are getting in the way. That's about right, isn't it? They, they really know how to wind you up when they make these things. Alright, come on. I can get to these ones. I can get to them ones, I can get to this one. Bear with me. Had to get a set of clip leads that will actually get in on there, one there, and these are emitter resistors here actually all. The last couple of Yamaha's I've worked on, they've been weird. They haven't got skimp on components like emitter resistors and they do really daft things like have protection circuits that only monitor one half of the output stage, you can't even get this bloody clip lead in here. So, you know, it's great if you happen to short your speakers and it shuts the amp down on one half of protection stage. I've got to get a pair of needle nose pliers, jeez. Oh, well, there's a pair right in front of me. Um, yeah, and have really weird things where the output protection just shuts the amp down. Uh, well, there's only one pair, so it does a piss poor job of. There we are. Piss poor job of actually protecting anything. So, yeah. Just looks like it's on that one transistor there then. Well, that might be a relatively easy fix. It depends on. Let's get that bloody thing out of the way. You can bugger off out of the way. And all. You can bugger off out of the way. Side. Um, yeah, so it should, depending on how many other transistors got blown upstream, which generally happens. That's interesting, I'm touching the heatsink there. Yeah, that was just the other leap. So, yes, looks like it's blown uh, this output transistor here by the looks of it. That should be a relatively easy fix, it's just getting the thing apart. 
transistors I have, and a lot of them, hello beard. Yeah, my beard's not been combed since I came out of the shower after work earlier. Man, that's looking rough. Um, right, so, what have we got? Can I zoom you in a little bit? That's as much as, I'll zoom in. Um, so, yeah, transistors in. This this transistor here, because I'm looking at it backwards on this screen because it's turned round. So it looks like a couple of screws and this board's going to lift out. However, the question is, how does one get all those... Surely I don't have to lift this entire board out. Because to get this these heat sinks out, well, I'm going to have to take the whole board out anyway. But that means I've got to take all these boards off to get this board out. Um, yes, that's going to be a lengthy affair. That's not a five minute job. Oh, yeah, I do love making this stuff and I asked to work on it as well. Um, right, you look at this. Even with these boards out, there's a little screw on the side of this to get this thing off. So you're not going to get much of a screwdriver in here between these two to get that off. And that's going to be a case of um, that bend the heat sinks down a bit once the rest of this stuff's out of the way, just to uh, get them transistors off. So yeah, it's. This transistor down here is the blown one, but as you can see, I'm going to have to get all this lot out to get this board off. So it's going to be, oh man, that's a lot of, yeah, that's not a, it's going to take more time getting this thing apart than it is um, changing that transistor. But, in for a penny, in for a pound, right? Well, just for the sake of recording it. Um, I'm gonna film figuring it out to get this thing apart, so I guess I need a pen. So, tracking wise, we'll put one mark on there and one mark on there, and we'll put two marks on this one and two marks on this one, and we'll put one on there and two on there, even though it says right channel on it, but we'll do it just for the sake of it. So if we forget that, we, um, it's my marks, I know to look for my marks. So I guess start at the start. Um, geez, yeah, so. Looks like first things first is gonna be to get, take this front panel off. Um, possibly these little knobs for here looks like they can stay on because they go through and this sub assembly can get unplugged and come off with this lot uh, and so can the rest of this to be honest so bear with me I've got someone messaging me over a faulty battery charger right so yeah where was I um, so mark some stuff off As if that will come off. I don't like plugging by wires, but sometimes it's just. Uh, I might not actually have to come off of that, to be honest. Alright. Because if that's all this assembly, it's all going to come out of this anyway. So that one's definitely going to have to come out. That one by the looks of it. Feels dodgy. We'll have to examine them a bit closer. 
Oh, still getting messages. Right, so that's connected to that, that's connected to that. This comes down to here, so oh, it's a little flippy. Oh, this is one of those where you can never figure out really how it's actually supposed to just to push you by the looks of it. It's all about, I know sometimes you think, well, why are you marking that off? It's all going to be real obvious where that came from. That might be so, just keep the uh, tripod there, that's all good. Oh, man. Come on, out of the bloody way. Let's try and make myself a bit of room here. Uh, but, once you've pulled it all apart, obvious sometimes isn't that obvious anymore. So a few extra pen dabs here and there can save you a lot of effing about in the future. Last year I had, uh, long story, um, I can't remember the name of their band, but um, a band which was going on tour in Europe with Kiefer Sutherland just before they were about to leave uh, a piece of equipment blew up a big ass old school UPS unit uh, they used it on a digital mixing desk they had which took time to boot up because they've had problems with momentary interruptions to the supply causing 10 minute resets whereas this desk had to boot up again so with it another piece of equipment being on a UPS it prevented that scenario from occurring however um, the thing weighed a ton and it was meant for 110 volt. I think they somehow managed to get it into the 240. It blew out some parts. And it was just, I have never worked on anything with so many connectors like these buggers in them. Um, and that was a billion photos and a ton of. In fact, you can think, yeah, how many of these little screws do you? I keep that one separate, we'll have a separate, uh, that's what came out the outside of the case, this is what's coming out from the inside of the outside of the case, uh, yeah and it was just so many cables and even with all the photos and the pen markings it was still an absolute pain to put back together, uh, it was one of those, I actually took pictures when it had gone back together because you, you get this thing where you suddenly sat there and you're going, shit, did I connect up that charge cable or did I connect up that little sensor unit? Did I put that little thermistor board back on? Um, and rather than having to get to the point where you're thinking, I'm going to have to get that back and pull it apart again and check it, you can um, look at your photos and go, no, nah, I did. I did put that back. So, um, yeah, that's... reframe you. So yeah, it's one of those camera phones are brilliant for that aspect, just taking a trillion pictures. Do you know what? You only ever get messaged when you start doing something. And you can see it here all day long and no one will message you. And the moment you pick up a screwdriver, two things will happen. You'll have to go and empty your bell and 30 people will message you. It's just the law, it's, it's the way the universe works somehow. So what else is holding this on? Oh, now I'm going to have to pull some knobs off because this front plate is holding in screws for the, um, this actual metal plate has more screws under it. S, stuff removings. So, what I need is something that's going to get these knobs off without. Now, there we go. Let's be gentle. Never force them. Sometimes you've got to get something behind them to leave them. But 
should come on. There we are. That was uh, painless enough. So, ooh, mmm, lovely. Is this in? If someone's looked after it um, physically. So, uh, right. There's a couple more screws down here. Make sure we get the right ones. So, only these outer ones by the looks of this one here. It needs to come up. I know you can't really see a lot, but if I put you where you can, uh, you're just going to be either in my way or I'm going to be in your way. So, <coughs> uh, apologies for that. It's just the way it is. So, what's still connected, there's going to be something I couldn't get. So this one's going to go right back to there. Take a picture of the routing of that one because that one's in a weird place. I've got some video of it anyway, but just because I want to have a couple just in case they went wrong. Just because. Um, Again, Sozal says if you don't, you'll get all confused and mess it up and go, what was I supposed to do with this piece of wire? So that is, oh, let's see, and you still, you still miss one. I think, mean, yeah, that's that um, contraption off. Well, I, can I focus on that? I don't know, who knows what it focused on, but yeah. And you can see it's got lots of, uh, it's not actually as much, you look, you look at the back sides of those boards, right? And you think, uh, you think they've probably got a ton of electronics on them, because the amount of tracks and everything, but when you look underneath them, look, there's nothing. There's no active components whatsoever. Uh, it's all just some caps and pots and so it's all just signal routing. This one's I'm guessing that's um, just there I'm guessing that's either an inline inline op amp or it's some voltage to volume converter or it's a motor driver because it's actually a motor driven pot old school style. So it's going to be either something to drive the motor, something that takes the Pot signal turns it into a voltage, or it's an actual op amp. But who knows? I, I don't have the service manual, I'll download one at some point. <coughs> and my phone is beeping again, so I need to attend to that. As, uh, the universe works in mysterious ways, right? So uh, I know I've mentioned in a few videos previously, but if you don't watch my videos and this is the first one you've watched or you've not really paid enough attention. The, I moved last year and oh, I'm going to have to take that off. Are we actually in the frame here? And anyway, so yeah, I've had a sod all area to do much of anything in really. Um, and i getting a workbench put in. Um, so, so it's only a little flat ripping the thing apart basically my front room is becoming my workbench area and kitchen all in one so uh, I've done some work in here I had to rip a load of stuff out put a load of units and stuff in for storage and bits and bobs and blah blah the usual and anyway see I'm just trying to figure out how this bit comes out so Phase two, it's been a sort of couple of months since I've done that. Phase two is doing the kitchen area, ripping some kitchen out and converting it so it's a kitchen and then on the end of it is a work area. And the bloke who's been messaging me, ironically enough, is the kitchen fitter. <laughs> who's the, that's the one who wants his um, battery chargers looking at. He's a freezer, freezer, not just a kitchen, he's a friend like, but um, yeah, I just thought it was quite ironic. And, and spoke to him for a bit and he messages me just as literally just things of a line where I was only thinking earlier right I need to start on this kitchen and 
like literally half an hour later, he messages me. So sometimes you get signs that things are meant to be. I'm not a religious man, but sometimes you just get signs that are meant to be. So I'm just going, that's a meant to be one. And so, yeah, so a discussion about looking at some charges for him has turned into a discussion where he's coming around tomorrow now and um, figuring out in a couple of weeks time where we're going to start on my uh, home improvements. So I know I waffle a lot in my videos. Uh, usually I'm not doing a great deal when I'm waffling away. But I thought this is just a... If you have one of these and you wanted to take it apart, not that uh, I'm saying to anyone that watching my videos makes you qualified to work on well, anything really. This is the sort of stuff you... Uh, this isn't exactly at the level of componentry that you want to be practicing. I might be able to leave that in, but Sod's Law says it's going to just be right in the way if I do. Um, same as that one, that's definitely going to have to come out. But yeah, Sod's Law says... Um, no, sorry, that's not something that. Um, yeah, you kind of need to know what you're doing. This is not beginner level stuff working on something like this just through the sheer complexity of the design. However, if you're a little bit more advanced or you're just way overconfident uh, and you're watching this video and using it to figure out where you go, well, I hope you know what you're doing because um, I certainly haven't taught you what you're doing. And best of luck to you, basically. I wish I, I can't get the camera. I wish I had the camera above so you can see better. But it is what it is. Right, so that's everything off of this board. Now disconnected, um, so it's now just mountings. So there are. Come on, let's get you back. So there are multiple screws here which hold this board onto this plastic base plate and this plastic base plate then screws onto the metal work and I really need to just take the whole amp off this plastic base plate because I'm going to need to get access to the underside of it. So all of those are going to have to come out. Um, these speaker terminals need unscrewing from this back plate so they can slide forward. This switch here needs to unscrew and these mounting points and what's on the underside oh. there is actually a bit of access from the underside but not enough to work on it um yeah no, like i said i want to do some mods anyway um don't think I need to take anything out from the underside by the looks of it. So, let me just see what my friend Stroke Mr. Kitchen Fitter has to say. I'm guessing that's him again. He's probably talking about his dog by now because that's what he was just on that. He's got a gorgeous little puppy. Right, so, let's um, start at the start, I guess. So this one here, that's holding this plug. Come back to me. No, <laughs> it bounced straight out of the pot. I wanted to put stuff in at this level and straight into the pot from the previous lot of screws. That is Sod's Law. You never have enough little glass jars hanging around when you're doing stuff like this. Also, I don't know how, I've ended up with three batteries for this camera. Um, I'm not entirely sure how. There was one in it, one in the charger, and then I just found one in the camera bag. Um, anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. Are we still...
Oh, we still in this. There we are, somewhere there. Just making sure that auto focus. Not seeing anything on the old auto focus. I'm going to have to just pull out focus and make that auto focus work. Hang on. Yeah, as always. Yeah, this is a weird camera. And it has like a autofocus thing on it but it's got like tracking modes and stuff like you put it on the area modes and you like say you set for the middle of the screen here it focuses in on it and then you move and it goes no I'm not focusing again unless you press it even though you've got continual autofocus on um, there's like a tracking one I could like track on the end of that and move it around and it'll focus on it but of course it's no good when you're doing this because once you once something comes in the way that breaks the point of focus it then just loses it so it just then stops focusing quite like these copper screws here they're nice bling bling uh, what is it? plain plain top these look like caps out of an old these must be um they're only copper coated because Copper ain't magnetic. They, like, they like, look like the um, old, old equipment capacitors with um, tops like that on them. But they've just got a heat shrink. They've got like a heat shrink covering. Oh, they? Twelve thousand microfarads. Oh, they say audio on them. Oh, fucking yeah, DC supply caps, mate. That's right. Any bullshit on there. I like how they've not got a voltage rating on them. Oh no, 71, 71 volts. It's not even a standard rate. Like 72 would be a standard cap rate, but it really isn't when it comes to capacitors. So you're going on like the E. Is it even going to be on the E12? It's going to be like on the E6 series or so because your standard cap voltage ratings, but they miss a few. You'll generally find you get like your 1, your 2.2. Your 4.7, you won't have a 5.6, you won't have an 8.2, then it'll go up to 10, then it goes straight up to 22, it misses like 15, 18. Then it goes um, from 22, 47, then it'll miss out to 56, you get 68s, but not that common. Uh, they generally, a lot of places, miss them straight out. Go from 47, miss 56, miss 68, miss uh, 82. Uh, yeah, 71 and 72 would be on like the e, even greater E series or even rarer. And then they jump straight to 100 from 47 generally. So, um, yes, yeah, 71, uh, 71 volts or like 70, same again with voltage ratings. 71 volts is a weird rating. So, yeah, I was just on that capacitance ratings rather than voltage ratings there, wasn't I? But the same kind of thing applies. So, yeah. Uh, Is a thing with something like this, never ever force it. If something feels like it doesn't want to move, don't just think it's stuck. Look, because you force a board with a ton of tracks on like this, and well, you should have to uh, figure out how bad that can end up. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, these are just flopping around in the breeze once you take them off. That's that out. Oh, I see, look, the cap's actually sold a transistor. So, yeah, I know this had been looked at before by someone, he said. Um, so that was, they said it needed some parts. So there we are, that's your dead. Someone's actually never bothered soldering them back in. So um, there we go. <coughs> Get that out of the way. Try that again and uh, see what's what. And uh, yes, that's that 
out of the way and that's enough for one night because I've just realised what time it is. I've got to be up at half four in the morning and it's now half past ten. So by the time I've sat down had a cuppa, um, chilled for a bit, it'll be time to go to bed. So crack on the rest of this tomorrow but yes, I didn't, uh, Obviously someone else decided then that these transistors were dead. Um, so yeah, they also unsold us some drivers by the looks of it, I'm guessing. Oh, so I've got the, uh, where are you? Can I, can I get you any more in? Oh yes, fantastic camera work there. So, What have we got? Well, that's not quite focused, is it, mate? Really? That's that's focused, is it? Wow. Well, Auto focus knows no bounds. Oh, maybe it's just beyond its focal length. But fair enough. For some reason, that's um. Yeah. yeah. That is a 2SC3421. Ah, there we go. So is this also shorted? TO126 base collector emitter. Yes, reading 100 and from collector to emitter, it's reading 105 ohms. So yeah, it's also um it's also shorted. Base to collector and oh yeah, look, base to emitter short. So that's also dead. That's nothing major. Um, I'll have to get the service manual rather than mess about follow tracks, although they're not overly difficult to follow. Um, but yeah, I'd have to just follow the tracks up to the correct transistors up this side of the board up here. Um, just to make sure none of that's short. I've, I've had amps before where literally it's took the entire, every single transistor and various protection diodes and all sorts out in one go. So, yeah, I'll have to, uh, have to investigate, but no, I will upgrade it. Do you know, I've got so many MOSFETs, like tons of them. All natural channels though, so even if I change the design I'd have to reroute the tracks to make them work because they have a different pin out than vertical MOSFETs. It would be cool to convert it to a MOSFET amp, but um, yes, we'll leave it for now and come back to that tomorrow. Right, so back to it. I've got the um, heatsink off. I don't know what the battery level on this camera is, it doesn't appear to be showing it anyway. Um, oh, you're in focus, possibly. So, I've got myself a service now. First thing that uh, strikes me is there's like some interesting components, like this resistor here is actually two resistors in one. There's an empty space on the board there. You see there's some unpopulated resistor spaces. To run the additional transistors, I need to either get these parts in or um, knock them up myself out of this video. You could put like single resistors and stuff in there. Um, but there appears to be like some additional compensation caps and stuff which the values aren't shown of on the schematic. You'd imagine they're probably going to be the same as these but you know what they say about assumption don't you? Um, and it's weird as well. Normally when you parallel transistors so I pan you round. Yeah, filming the screen on a computer is like the best thing in the world to do. It's got to be a dodgy angle, but that's what you're getting. Um, 
So you can see like I'll brighten up a bit, you might have a bit more of it. So you can see uh, instead of it got the additional output transistor here, instead of it actually going straight parallel to the emitter, there's then another one of these um, two resistor in one combinations. Uh, there's a couple of them needed on the board to actually get two different locations and the, the emitters of the two extra output transistors actually tie together at the midway point of the output rail but then the emitters of these resistors also tie through that rather than this one so the question is do you still use this one? I'm going to say no you wouldn't I'm going to say this one then gets removed um, so yeah, you, this would need moving to one of those positions and I'd have to make up another one of them. It would make no sense to leave this one in place. So you'd have to put another 4.70. They've got base stopper resistors there and there to the output, so that's just going to be 4.7 ohms. Um, but yeah, then you start getting to like these components, R126. Uh, I don't even know where that is on the board. Uh, yeah, I see it right. R126 and R134 on the board have nothing in them. Oh, you go away. So that's R126. Where R134 is? R146, R120. I'm looking for a never know. So this is like a. So this part of the negative feedback line. Right, so yeah, it's a really annoying schematic as well that they've put these big, bold, additional annotations on stuff. So R132, R139. I'm going to guess R134 could possibly be this thing under here. Uh, so you can see there's like additional, depending on what components output stage you go with. There's some additional components which need to be added. Um, I don't know what the values of those are. It's not shown on the schematic, it might be down further in the parts list, but I doubt it very much. <coughs> we'll have a look. Um, but yeah, in total there's, looks like there's at least two, three capacitors and two extra resistors that need adding. Um, so that's going to be that, that capacitor, that capacitor. These extra resistors here and here, and of course the power resistors. Um, yeah, so whether it's worth it or not, who knows, but what I need to do is get on with my initial um, plan of, I'm trying to figure out why this is looking all weird, and of course, yeah, there we go, I've got the uh, actual screen for the camera tilted a million miles away from me, so uh, I am going to try and test for faulty components, see what else has been taken out. So, uh, if I zoom out a bit, I guess get the meter in as well. At least you can see something then. There you go. So, we'll start with... Uh, what should we start with? I guess the bias tracking transistor that's right in front of my face. So, what is it? Uh, is an NPN is it? It is an N type transistor, so we should have a common 692. 692. I'm reading something else there because I'm getting the exact same. Well, that's not right. That's a short circuit, right? So that's dead. So let's take that out to verify. It's a strange little flat pack transistor if I've ever seen one. So let's get that. Let's get that taken out. I've got my uh, soldering iron already heated up. Uh, where's my... Um, there you are. The old tip cleaner. Which itself is probably really, really dirty and in need of cleaning. Okay, so... I'm not going to zoom you in for this because I wasn't going to be constantly reaching in and out there and zooming in and out and you're probably just going to get my head in shot anyway. It's a good old bit of soldering blade. I'll tell you what I will do, uh, if I can find it. A little bit of a 
Fuck something there. Fuck something there. Uh, clean that up. Sticky piles of rosin flux all over the place. And let's see what happens, shall we? Okay, that lifted pretty good. Okay, so far so good. Sometimes, sometimes boards like to be compliant and unsoldered. Easily, good flux, a fresh, uh, a fresh blob of solder and some, um, yeah, good solder braid flux and a fresh blob of solder go a long way. Uh, so let's, that's loose. Let's come, let's help you out of there. Where are my? What do you call these? Little. Serial killer play kit. I don't know. Come on. Don't use force right. There it is. Let's test it. Uh, let's have a short circuit between two terminals. So, was it this transistor or was it something else that shorted? Three M. Um,